I'm going to talk about here is when we talk about weed resistance and all this sort of stuff that everyone's going to talk about, a lot of times people say, well, is it actually here? You know, is it in our backyard? And you say, yes, but have we actually done any type of testing or anything like that to prove that it's here in our backyard? And the answer is, with this group, yes. Yes, we have. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about here. We're going to go through a little bit of some of the testing we've done partnered with Iowa State on there because they have a lab, they grow it out. Dr. Prashant Jha, his group does a lot of that growth and a lot of that stuff for us. So that's where it is. But initially, if you've been to this field day before, this was in, was this 2018, Larry, I believe? 18? Probably. So in 2018, the first thing we did was we came out here and we collected some weed samples. And we grew them out and we tested them on group 9, group 14, and group 27. Okay, so you round up your Cobra and your Callisto. That's what we did. And this is what we saw. Because what we really wanted to do was, again, see what is our resistance portfolio and our dynamic that we have actually here in the county. Okay, so these are older numbers, but you've seen it before. So we saw some, we, some locations where they're at, giant ragweed, palmer amaranth, and water amaranth. What we were able to show was that some of them, this one here, palmer amaranth, 100% weed survival when we sprayed it with Callisto. Okay, and then we had some of these other ones. So this was our initial data that we took and we decided, you know what, we need to expand this. This is a good snapshot, but if you do any good research or any good thing like that, you know one year isn't good enough to do it. Some of the things that we had here and some of the examples of some of the things that we did. So one of the first ones they did was they sprayed PPO, group 14, and this was on some of the water hemp seeds. So we collected different populations in 2020. Um, we collected them I guess in 2019, sorry. And we collected them from around the county, and I'll show you where we collected some of them from. Um, some of them were individuals that contacted us and said, hey, I think I have a resistance issue. Other ones were, hey, there's a spot out in the middle of the field that looks like there could have a weed issue there, so went and stole some water hemp. Okay, I don't really have anybody here who really gets mad if you go and steal some of their water hemp seed. I mean, I could be wrong, but no one's really ever yelled at me for stealing their water hemp seed. We can so, do that. But what they ended up doing was they took these, grew them out in flats, and they grew some out in tubes like this, and then they went and sprayed them. They sprayed these. Here's the untreated water hemp. These were sprayed with a 1x rate, and this was Cobra. All right, so just a standard 1x rate. And then a 4x rate of Cobra. Okay, so 1x would be, you know, what you normally should do in the field. Most of you probably aren't doing a 4x rate in the field. You shouldn't be. It's off-label. But, you know, we look at those things to see what happened. But again, some of these water hemp were resistant. This guy down here sprayed with a 4x rate. Think he'll keep growing? Yeah. Yeah, he will. So, we've got that. Another one they did was HPPD Group 27. Again, the untreated, so you can see what they look like. 1x, 4x. Rate of the Callisto in there. So when we look at that, we're like, okay, there's always some weed escapes. We've got some things like that. The fact that we've got some of this resistance isn't that shocking. Now, again, in the handout, you've got this, but we're going to go harp on this slide a couple times, okay, because it's fairly important. Because these are from the populations that we collected in Harrison County. What we saw was not only do we have single resistance, we also have two-way three-way and four-way stacked resistances that we were able to determine from here in this county. Okay? So it's not just, you know, group two, group five, you know, those are pretty common. You know, that's not too shocking that we have group two and group five. Uh, group nine, there's your life to say it again. Of all the populations we, select, we collected, and I believe it was 20, 20 or 30 populations we collected across the county. Most of them were resistant to Roundup. Again, not a shocking statement when it comes to water hemp. But we did have confirmed resistance right here for probably about 15% of them, 10, 15% for the group 14s and the group 27s. Now, this little example right down here is important. Population was resistant when 20% of the plants survive at a 4x rate, all right? So I sprayed all this whole flat of plants, 100 plants, 
20% of them survive at a 4x rate. That equals confirmed resistance. Now if you look at this next one here in green, 2,4-D and dicamba. You're like, wait a minute. We have resistances to 2,4-D and dicamba, and the answer to that is we're not sure. So what we noticed was a threshold of 30% was used for 2,4-D and dicamba at a 1x rate. So we didn't try it at a 4x. We used just a 1x rate that you normally would do in the field. And we saw that some of them were, we call them survivors, we call them susceptible. They're not resistant, we don't have it confirmed, but there were some escapes that came through there. All right, and Brent will talk more about it out in the field and things like that, so we'll, we'll talk more about that. But the thing to remember is, there, we're not sitting here saying, oh man, we have confirmed weed resistance in Harrison County to 2,4-D and dicamba. We're not blowing that up, that's not what we're saying. We're saying we had some survivors. And I got some pictures of that and what we're gonna do with that here in a second. Now also over here, percent of populations with stack resistance. 100% of them almost, group twos and group fives are out before you even start. Before you even fill the sprayer, you might as well just spray them with water if you're just doing a two and a five. You're not gonna get them. And again, the three-way resistance, we're at about 65% of them, two, five, nine. So if you're on that fence and you're sitting there going, well, Roundup has always worked for me and I haven't really gotten to switch yet. I think I'm, Roundup is still good for me and it's fine. I'm not telling you that it's not gonna work for you. I'm telling you that your neighbor it probably doesn't work for them. And they've gotten to a situation where it's not going to work for them in the future. So you need to protect the fact that your Roundup is still effective for you and not run it into the ground because Across this county and other places, it's been run into the ground. All right? And then four-way resistance, 259, either 14 or 27. Um, again, about 20% of them have about a four-way resistance in there. So these are some scary things when we start talking about this. Brent, you want to, he yep. wants to hop in. Yep, I'll uh, pop in on just a couple of things. So just remember, group two, um, ALS, right? Classic, Pursuit, First Rate, Group 2, Group 5, Triazine, Atrazine, Metribuzin. So if you're questioning, can you spray Atrazine over an Emerge Water Hemp, uh, these populations, close to 100% of them would survive, right? A quarter of a pound of Atrazine, or a full shot of Pursuit, or a full shot of Classic, or a full shot of First Rate over the top of emerge water amp, they would more than likely survive. Now, these populations are not a random sample of every field. These are surviving populations. So we collected them in October, so that meant they more than likely made it through some type of herbicide program, right? They survived. We don't even know what program. We didn't, we didn't document that. We went out into those fields, trespassed, grabbed the water hemp, shoved them, in a, Come on. shoved them in a paper bag, and off they went to and Iowa ran and State. Jumped in the car. Right, like Mike said. So, and that was a process. We did it in 2018, we did it in 2019, and we also did it in 2020. This would be the 2019. So we don't have any idea what the 2020 stuff has done. All they've done is screen the 2019, random across, uh, across the county surviving populations, and then historically, you know, glyphosate, of course, and then 14, right, Blazer Cobra, Flexstar, if you think of 14, Authority, Valor, Sharpen, Group 27, think of the laundry list, Callista, Lotus, Armazon, Impact, uh, you name it, right, Acuron, Halix, on and on and on and on, tons and tons of those HB, HPBD bleachers. Those five have what we've always screened for, just those five. Well, now with the introduction of Extend Soybeans and 240 Tolerant Enlist Soybeans, we're now starting to screen also for 240 and Dicamba. And there's one more on here that's not even on the chart yet, is Glufosinator Liberty. So Iowa State now, when you submit samples to them, they're not only screening for five, they're screening for eight adding 2,4-D, dicamba, and now liberty. Knock on wood, so far the populations they've screened haven't shown any liberty tolerance. But of course you ask Dr. Ja, he will say, 
it's just a matter of time, right? We, we do a good job of playing whack-a-mole um, and, and, and selection pressure. Now, the other interesting thing is they are taking these populations and they are screening them for 4X. So Dicamba 2,4-D and Liberty or Glufosinate are getting screened for 4X. These are the ones that we did last year. So this is the untreated with 2,4-D, half rate, 1X. So these are some of the survivors that we were talking about before that, that we saw come through there. This was the Dicamba, untreated, you know, half X rate, one X rate, but long. So 2,4-D Dicamba survivors, these were at the one X rate, not the half. These were at the one. So if we go back and look, so they would be like, I'm just gonna pick on this plant right here. Spray at one X, probably gonna make it. Some of these right in here at one X might've made it. This is some of those survivors. Okay, did they make it? Yeah, they did. So what they're doing with these is they're growing them in bigger pots. What they're gonna do is they're gonna take that seed and they're gonna regrow it and screen it again in our 2020 samples, okay? To see if maybe it was a spray issue. You know, those things happen. Maybe they just didn't get good coverage in the spray chamber. Maybe there was something else that was going on. So we're taking these genetics of these individual ones that were 2,4-D and dicamba tolerant, and we're gonna regrow them, take the seed, and then grow that back out and spray it. So that's your to be determined um, on our next set of results so that we can see what was going on in that. I told you we'd talk about the county, so here's the county, right here. What this is, is this is a distribution in the 2019 of what we had of the three-way and the four-way resistant population okay so what we've got is I put it in quadrants because I don't want people to know necessarily you guys are from the county you can figure out where who's where who you know where you live there was three locations that had three-way two locations that had four-way here again five two five one ten one and the reason why there's more there is because we sampled more from that area okay sometimes we just don't want to drive very far I don't know take a lot in here so, but again, that's what we were looking at. That is here. All those populations are from here. They're not from Northern Iowa. They're not from Southeast Iowa, Indiana, right here in our backyard, okay? So again, in 2020, we took some populations. We sampled more from these areas right here. We figured we got a decent sample there. So we uh, sampled some other ones from these locations to kind of fill out the county and things like that. Okay, so I guess the take home message on this is, number one, it's not going away. We had our initial that we saw. It's not getting any better from these other screens that we're showing. It's in our backyard and no one's immune to the problem when it comes to that. For more information or to get involved with the Harrison County Pest Resistant Management Project, visit protectiowacrops.org.